Welcome to this walkthrough of the Accio credit card fraud demo. I am Jeff Matthews. I am head of enablement at Accio, and I will be taking you through this as a tour. You can also look through the demo flow in our onboarding options for this. All you have to do is hover over the flow itself in the main page and just click to take that walkthrough. But we're going to be going through pretty much the same things here. So let's get started. We loaded directly up into the table. Uh, you can see that this is actually a view only flow. That's because uh, I saved it and shared it. So we're not gonna be able to make any changes, but that's fine. That We don't need to do that for right now. Uh, I wanted to highlight this nice new button over here, the pivot view. This is gonna be really useful for figuring out what columns you have in large data sets. So you can see we now, now have a much more digestible set of, okay, well, what is in this data set? So you can see you can actually go in and edit the data types if you want to change a bunch of them. So for example, I'm not actually going to do this, but if I go in here, I can change these data types and I can change them all at once. So it makes it a lot faster. It's a nice uh, little new feature. With that, let's take a look at how the prediction went. Uh, this was highly accurate, 97.9%, but let's drill down a little bit more. So you can see that our true positives were 87%. That's really good. Uh, especially in a small amount of positives versus a large amount of negatives data set, you really want to make sure you're focusing on whether it can find that small amount of data. Uh, as we look down, we can see what the top factors were. Uh, if it was your first purchase, it is much more likely to be fraudulent. And that makes sense. People generating numbers, uh, trying to find cards that way. So that all, that all makes sense. Uh, you can go down where we can segment out the data. So you can see you have likely, uncertain, and unlikely, and you can use this to create a decision threshold for what you might want to flag. Uh, this data set lends itself nicely to working into the API to send out automatic messages based on API draws of whether it's past the decision threshold or not. So actually, let's take a look at that. So we see here, we have the API, we're pulling everything out, and you can see the sample request and the sample response, you can just copy and paste it and work with that quite easily. Uh, we have a full documentation section on our website for setting up and working with the API that I encourage you to take a look at if you're working with that. And our support team is always here to help as well. And don't forget, you don't just have to deploy to one location, you can also deploy to API and web app or to Google Sheets or anything else. Uh, it's nice to have the web app output when you're going into the API though, because it gives you kind of more a hands-on, faster interaction, just kind of see what you're working with in this situation. But that's it, nice and quick, a couple of new features. Feel free to play around with this data set, uh, send in any questions to support, and take a look around our other media to see if there's anything else of interest to you. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Jeff Matthews. I'm gonna remain Jeff Matthews, and uh, cheers.